Hi, this is Teacher Jennifer from U.S. Citizenship Podcast. Every week we bring you practice interviews, quizzes, and the latest news that help you get ready for your U.S. Citizenship interview. We've been on hiatus for uh, three months, but we're back, and today we're going to talk about a quick comparison between the U.S. N-400 and the Census 2020 form. Let's do an overview of the U.S. N-400 and the Census. The U.S. CIS N-400 can be downloaded for the, from the USCIS.gov, which is part of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Form N-400 is used to apply for U.S. citizenship through the naturalization process, and its origin is in the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, Section 1, Clause 1, which defines how to be uh, naturalized as an American citizen. Census 2020 is, um, information about it is available at census.gov. It is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and the U.S. Census counts the population in the United States every 10 years. And its source in the U.S. Constitution is Article 1, which is part of the uh, articles that define the rights and responsibilities of Congress, Section 2. I want to do a quick overview of the N-400 application for naturalization. It was supposed to be updated March, um, March 2019, and we're still waiting for those changes to come through. The first part is about eligibility, where you talk about how you are eligible or are legally able to become a U.S. citizen. We talk about information about you, about your name and birth date and things like that. You're going to see that kind of information on the census. We're going to talk about accommodations because of physical disabilities, contact info, which you will see on the census, residence, which is really um, gone into deeply on the census, information about parents, biographical information, which you will see on the census, employment in school, travel or time outside the United States, marital history and children. And you will see that uh, referred to on the census in an indirect way because it does talk about how you are related to the head of the household. Then there's the additional information where they talk about your, um, your moral character. That is not gone into on the census. And then finally, there's the signature and the oath of allegiance. Here's a side-by-side uh, -side comparison of the N-400 and the census 20, 2020. Of course, I put in the most important parts of the N-400, and then I'm comparing it to the questions that will be answered on the census 2020. One of the questions, is this person a citizen of the United States? Recently, the Supreme Court said that um, this should not be included on the census. However, the decision has been appealed and it's being reviewed by the U.S. District Courts. So we're still waiting for a final decision about that. Um, we, th there are two versions of the census. The census um, done by the person number one, who is the head of the household, this is the person who is legally obligated to pay the taxes or the paying the rent, those kind of things, versus the people who come and live with that person. So um, they're going to be asked a, a couple sets of different questions. The first question they'll ask is the number of the people living or staying in a home on April the 1st, 2020. So they're going to simply count who, how many people are living in your residence. Now, an alternative to that is the person who is not um, the um, who is a member of the household, but not the um, the um, the main breadwinner is going to be asked, where do you usually live? Frequently, children are at school, uh, particularly at college. So even though they're part of the family unit, they're actually going to be living in a dorm room and they will be counted there at their uh, at their residence. Question two, 
They're going to ask the head of the household, were there any additional people staying here on July the 1st, 2019, that you did not uh, include in question one. This is because in July the 1st, 2019, in some areas, they're going to start sending out the, uh, the census forms. And uh, if you do not answer the census form by that time, there's going to be follow up at certain parts of the year, particularly on April 1st, uh, 1st 2020, where they want to finalize the, the final count. During that nine month year period, people do move because of jobs or schools. So um, that's what they're looking for in that kind of information. Now, the member of the household will be asked a different question. They're going to ask you how you are related to person one, the person who is the head of the household. Uh, you see these kind of questions pop up on the N-400 in, uh, in the marriage section and also the section related to um, children and also sometimes when they ask you further questions about sponsorship. Question three, is this house or apartment or mobile home owned with a mortgage, owned without a mortgage, occupied without payment of rent or rented. Now we do not, on the N-400, they are not, people are not asked uh, directly uh, how people pay for their, their home, but in, indirectly they are because people do file their taxes. And when you do file taxes, you talk about uh, property, uh, property tax that has been paid or renter's credit or something like that. So that kind of information does come up indirectly via the, via the taxes you pay as part, as part of your responsibility as an American citizen. Uh, question four, what is your telephone number? Now, the uh, USCIS N-400 has an entire section in there about all the tef uh, different telephone numbers and email addresses they can contact you by. People, they want this telephone number because they want to contact you in case that there's any uh, problem with your census form or for simple follow-ups to this form. The same reason why the N-400, uh, excuse me, the same reason why USCIS would want to contact you through your telephone. Question five, what is your name? So they want to know the person who is the head of the household, their name, and then the names of the household members. They're, they're wanting to know your first name, your middle initial, and your last name. And you can you see this information again and again on US CIS N-400 form when they talk about um, your personal information when they ask you your name, if the name is the same on your green card as your legal name, if they're asking about your your uh, spouse and your children. So uh, people who do uh, are familiar with the N-400 are uh, familiar with the different uh, ways people are asked for their name. Here is what is your the person's uh, what is your sex and so um, they only give two options on the the um, census and on the N400 they only give you male or female so um, if you are an intersex person um, I you're gonna have to you may want to consider writing uh, a letter about this explaining this further. Question seven, we have, what is your age and what is your date of birth? So we're here we have, we have a gentleman celebrating his 70th birthday on July the, uh, July the 1st. Question eight, where they're going to be asking you about if you are uh, of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish uh, origin, uh, they would like to, which is an interesting question that they also talk, ask about in the N-400. Uh, N-400, they are not asking if you speak uh, Spanish, they're asking 
If you are Mexican or Mexican-American or Chicano, if you're Puerto Rican, if you're Cuban, or if you are a Hispanic of another Spanish country, say, for instance, uh, uh, Salvadorian, Dominican, Colombian, Guatemalan, Spaniard, Ecuadorian, et cetera, et cetera. Here we have what is your what is your race? So there's several there's many uh, choices here. You can choose white, which would be if you're German or Irish or English or Italian or Lebanese or e e Egyptian. Um, my my dad was Italian, my mom was German. Um, if you're black or African American, so for instance, if you're from Jamaica or um, Haiti or Nigerian or Ethiopian from the African countries. The next one they're asking if you're American Indian or Alaska Native. Um, so they'll ask you if you're members of the Navajo Nation, Blackfeet tribes, all the tribes that we uh, study in uh, the process of our citizenship preparation. Again, you do see this information in the USCIS section when they're ta asking about uh, 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 biological information or excuse me, biographical information. Further uh, choices are they're gonna ask you if you're Asian, Filipino, Asian Indian, or Pakistani or Cambodian or Hmong, if you're Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, Native Hawaiian, Samoan, Chamorro, or other Pacific Islanders. That's about it. Now the big question is that's still being debated is are you an American citizen? So this, uh, again, uh, just to reiterate, this uh, decision is pending. Decisions from the lower U.S. district courts and um, there's asking um, the choices are you were born in the United States, you were born in one of our territories, you were born abroad by um, U.S. parents, um, you were naturalized, and no, you're not a U.S. citizen. So if you mark no, you're not a U.S. citizen, as many uh, legal permanent residents do, you're not indicating that you're here illegally, you're just simply saying that you're there, you're um, not claiming to be a U.S. citizen, not yet. So there's so much more to talk about on the census, but I wanted to give you that quick overview of what's um, the connection between the U.S. CIS uh, N-400 and the census. And um, next week, we're going to dig deeper into the census and uh, the implications for representation. Uh, thank you so much. I know you will be a great American citizen. Bye-bye.